Hello, my name is Brian and I'm a technical support engineer here at ScreenMeet. In today's video, we'll be covering the Salesforce and ScreenMeet Live integration. Our example use case today will be that we are working through a Salesforce case and that we have determined a ScreenMeet Live session should be started. As a note before we move forward, your use case may be slightly different, although the underlying ScreenMeet functionality will not change. For example, your organization may be helping customers or end users via email, phone, chat, or other communication method. The ScreenMeet widget can be embedded on any Salesforce object by your ScreenMeet administrator, such as a case, contact record, opportunity, or chat record. We also would like to note that your organization may not have the same functionality or features as shown in our example if your ScreenMeet administrator has disabled or acquired features to be enabled by default. To proceed, we will navigate to our case inside of Salesforce that has a ScreenMeet widget embedded inside of it. We've determined that due to the nature of the customer's inquiry, a ScreenMeet Live session should be created in order to provide a better customer experience and to reduce the time to resolution. Our ScreenMeet administrator has deployed the ScreenMeet widget to the right of the current case with the customer. Your widget may be placed on a different type of Salesforce record, such as an opportunity or chat record, and may also require you to click on a tab or expand the tab to view the widget. To start, we can see that we are prompted with options to record the session, approve guest ability to join, and enabling audio. We will enable recording and audio for this particular session and click on Start Live Call. Once the session has been created, you will see the name of the case that corresponds to the associated Salesforce record, the session type, as well as links and pins to the send to the customer or to the end user. If you're assisting a customer or end user inside of an email or other method, you can copy the link by clicking on the clipboard to the right of the URL. If you are assisting a customer or end user over the phone, it will be easier to instruct them to the myhelpscreen.com link and provide them the six digit pin rather than needing to read out the longer URL listed inside of the link section. When you have the widget embedded into Salesforce Omnichannel Chat, you can also press a button to automatically send the link to the customer or end user. To join the session, you can click on join session, which will open the session inside of the current Salesforce window. Alternatively, you can click on the pop-up button to open the ScreenMeet Live session in a new tab. Once we have joined the session, you will see that we have a disclaimer that indicates the call will be recorded since we enabled this setting when creating the session. Next, you will see the camera preview pane, which allows you to verify that your camera is working as expected and that you have the proper camera selected as well. Next, we will see a microphone mute and unmute button that will also show a rising background as you speak, which is a good way to verify that your microphone is unmuted and working as expected. You have a camera on and off toggle here as well, and when the camera is enabled, the subsequent camera background option is now able to be interacted with. The camera background allows you to have no background, blurring, or potentially a custom branded background if your ScreenMe administrator has uploaded one for your organization. Lastly, we have a settings panel that allows you to switch your input and output devices, such as your microphone, camera, and speakers. The name field as shown here automatically pulls your name from the Salesforce integration. Any guests or participants that are joining outside of Salesforce will need to enter their display name manually. Starting at the top left of the ScreenMeet Live page, we will have another indicator that the session is being recorded as we enable this a bit earlier on in the session. To go over the next set of functionality, I will have our customer or end user join the session. Next, we have the meeting information pane, which allows you to gather the session ID of the session, the pin, URL, and case description if they need to be referenced again. The next option that is available allows you to change the layout to either a focused view that allows you to click on a given user or a grid layout that distributes the display of the participants evenly. Up next is the full screen toggle, which allows you to expand the ScreenMate Live session to a full screen view. As seen earlier in the lobby before the session started, you have additional toggle options for your microphone and camera that can be interacted with as needed. Next, we have the screen sharing functionality, which allows the agent or meeting participants to share their screen. They can either share their entire monitor, a certain window, or a given Chrome tab if needed. In this case, I will have our simulated customer share a Chrome tab of a web page that they need assistance with. 
Once a screen share has started, the agent can click on the three dots to the top right of the screen share and annotate or draw over the displayed web page. You can also change the color of the drawing or the size as well. Lastly, we have our options to undo the last drawn action or to clear all drawings. Once you are done with the annotation phase of the session, you can click on the stop drawing option. Up next is the settings pane, which allows you to view other functionality within the ScreenMeet Live platform. As a note, some features and functionality have already been shown, such as the meeting information, and will also show up in this toolbar. The reason for this is that in a lower resolution environment, these icons may not be visible in the bottom left or bottom right of the ScreenMeet session. The next feature that we would like to cover is the chat feature, which allows meeting participants to type to each other inside of the session. This can be useful if you get disconnected from the user in a phone call or Salesforce chat and need to converse with the participant. Once you are in the chat, you can send and receive files using the attachment feature as well. If your ScreenMeet administrator has configured the attachment retention setting, these attachments will automatically be attached to the Salesforce record. As covered earlier, we have quick access options to change your background, video, and audio settings if needed. Specifically inside of the video settings, you can downscale your resolution if you're having network connectivity or bandwidth issues. Up next is the advanced settings pane, which allows you to enable or disable features inside of the ScreenMeet Live session. Some of these settings were already seen at the start of the session, though you can enable them mid-session if needed as well. As you can see here, we have options to disable or enable audio, approve request to join the session, the ability to enable or disable recording, depending on if it was already started at the beginning of the session or if you need to enable it mid-session. And you also have options to follow the active speaker, which just displays the icon or the camera of the person that's currently speaking in the session. And lastly, followed by flipping the camera image and language localization. Up next, we have our participants or people, which will simply show you the list of current participants that are inside of the session. Inside of this pane, you can pin the view of a particular participant, promote them to the host of the session, or kick them out of the session. Lastly, we have the other sessions functionality, which allows you to create a remote support or co-browse session if your organization has licensing for these products. At the bottom right of the ScreenMeet Live window in higher resolution environments, we have easy access icons of the participants, chat, and settings as well. Lastly, we have our hang up button, which allows you to leave or close the session as needed. Leaving the session will keep the session open, whereas closing the session is permanent in nature. Once the session has been closed, the agent will receive a post session request for feedback if they would like to leave any information about their experience. Customers or end users are not shown this request for feedback. This concludes the ScreenMeet Live session portion of the training, and we will now show you the post session information that can be viewed. As seen in the bottom right of our case, our Salesforce administrator has enabled the junction object between the case and the ScreenMeet Live session and has created a related list. To view information about the ScreenMeet session that we just concluded, we will click on the session here. Inside of the ScreenMeet Live session object within Salesforce, you will see various pieces of metadata around the session that just took place. This includes, but is not limited to the session duration, session creation date, the session ID, and the recording URL. Depending on if your ScreenMeet administrator has configured your organization for file storage, you may see the recording of the file directly attached to the file section of the case or within inside of the ScreenMeet Live session as shown here. This may also include any attachments that were sent utilizing the chat functionality as well. Lastly, we have the log functionality, which will include granular information about each action taken within the session, such as when a participant joined, if certain settings were enabled, and other key events that took place. This concludes our overview of the ScreenMeet Live and Salesforce integration. Please let us know if you have any questions. We'd be glad to assist. Thanks and have a great day.